Sevilla. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, Jesus. Let's get it going here. Hallelujah. Thank you for the victory in Christ Jesus. We are great, O oh God. There's no one like you, Lord, in you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I just got blocked for playing music at the beginning of the video, but in spite of, I guess they must have saw the message I did not own the right to the song of music playing and released it again. But anyhow, we're going to go ahead and proceed with our lesson tonight, but we're going to discuss, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit and his power, the Holy Spirit and his power. So let's open a word of prayer. Grace of God, our Father, I thank you for your goodness and mercy bestowed upon us, God. I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives, oh God, to will and do according to your good pleasure. I thank you, Lord, that you're sovereign and you're holy and that you're faithful, God, even in distractions. When the enemy comes to thwart the plan of God, from Father God, from ministering to your people, God, it's, it's a shame how the secular world can put all types of other things on Facebook, and yet, God, when we do something righteous, we get blocked. Father, we bind the demonic force right now. Every attack and assault that will come against your lessons getting across the, the word to the hearts of people, God, that have ears to hear what the Spirit says to the church, that the word will come forth with power and authority, God, that will help bring change in all of our lives, our minds, our hearts. Forgive us for our sins, O oh God, knowingly, unknowingly, and wash us in the blood of the Lamb. Purify our thoughts and our actions, God. Let it line up with your word. Anything in our heart that we know of, God, that's not right, take it out, oh God. Purge it out by the blood of the Lamb. 
and sanctify us by thy truth, because you said in your word, we are cleansed by the words which you have spoken unto us, and we receive it by faith that we have been delivered and set free. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Am I coming across clear? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. The Lord reigns and his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Now the spirit of the, the now the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. The word says, 2 Corinthians 3, 17. Third chapter, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Now the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. The only way you can maintain a standard of freedom of being no longer entrapped or ensnared by the enemy is allowing the spirit of living God to begin to place the word of God in your heart. And you take the word of God, you meditate on the word of God, you study the word of God, you apply the word of God to your daily living. And the word of God will give you insight and give you revelation of the heart of God that will help change your mindset and your attitude and your lifestyle. So many people are in bondage to their own mindsets because they have not been regenerated by the word of God. They have not been set free. But the spirit of the living God is faithful, is true, has the ability to set one free when you allow the spirit of God to get in your heart. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And last, last, last couple of weeks ago, we talked about being born of the spirit. When Jesus said in St. John chapter 3, verse 5, St. John chapter 3, verse 5, th this is the Pharisee that came to Jesus by night, and he asked the master, he said, Rabbi, teacher, Rabbi means teacher, and we know that thou art a teacher from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest. So Nicodemus recognized the, the power that Jesus had flowing through his life, healing the sick, raising the dead, unstopping deaf ears. He, he witnessed, even heard of the things that Jesus had done. He said, no man can do these things that you do except God be with you. Jesus answered to him and said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That's in verse 3. Nicodemus, verse 4. Verse 4 said, Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Think about that. If someone came to you and asked you this question, How can I be born again? How can I receive salvation? Do I have to go back into the mother's womb and be born again? Or is there some type of ritual or method I need to engage in in order to receive this salvation? Jesus answered in verse 5, St. John chapter 3, verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water. That water is symbolic to the word of God. It doesn't mean water that you drink, the water you bathe in, the water you go into the swimming pool. It's not referring to that. It's referring to the water of the word of God that has the ability to cleanse you and set you free. Only way the word can work in your life to transform your mind, your heart, and will to, to the, uh, the pattern and the lifestyle of God if we allow yourself to take the time out to study, to meditate, to mutter, that means to speak the word over yourself, to devour, to digest the word of God, and allow the word of God to begin to come out of you to manifest state, manifest God's lifestyle through your life. So many people are in bondage to the things of the past. One thing I heard recently, a pastor say, he says, your habits, your addictions, they don't go away. They just lie dormant and they wait on the opportunity for the moment to reveal themselves again. But the only way and habit or addiction, a stronghold an issue in your life can be eradicated is what Jesus says here. Verily, verily, I said that he except the man be born of water and of the spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. 
being born of the water is the washing away of the sin and iniquity from your heart. Being born of the spirit is the new birth. So when I, I'm born of the spirit, I'm allowing God's presence through the comforter to come into my life to begin to change my DNA, change my entire blood system, change my, my familiarity. So now I begin to focus and pattern my life after Christ and not off of familiar spirits that come through generational curses. Too many people have been bound by generational curses because they refuse to let go of certain things or certain people in their lives. You can have some, some items in your house that's been prayed over by witch doctors. A lot of people have those African uh, uh, statues and African uh, 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 artifacts on their walls. And many of the, those things have been prayed over by witch doctors. And you introduce spirits into your house. The only way those things will not be effective if you begin to pray over those things and if the Spirit of God say, get rid of those things, get rid of them. But if the Spirit of God give you peace in your heart, it's okay to have those things, then cast the Spirit off that may have came with those items and allow the Spirit of God to fill your habitat, your house, your spiritual house, your physical house with the presence of the Lord. That which is born of the flesh, verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. So he's re referring to the birth of a child coming through the birth canal, being in the mother's womb. He's referring to this type of encounter to let Nicodemus know that I know what you're talking about. You're thinking that if you go back into the mother's womb, then you receive this new life. But I'm telling you that that which is born of the flesh is of the flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So if I'm born again by the Holy Spirit, guess what? I have the Spirit of God living inside of me. Because one thing about the flesh, the flesh is a hostile, is an enemy, it resists, it opposes, it rebels, it rebels. It does not do what God wants you to do because of the enemy's influences in your mindset. And when you get to the place you recognize there are certain things going on in your life. And one thing I've realized something about my own self. That every time I drift away and don't spend time in the word of God, don't spend time in consecration and praying, my mind drifts. That's when the spirit of lust comes into the mindset, the spirit of pride, the spirit of haughtiness. You try to find everything in this, this world to satisfy your flesh but seeking God's face. But only true satisfaction comes when I recognize that only God has the ability to fill the empty space in my heart. We can allow our hearts to be emptied out before God with all the things of the world that we allow to influence our lives, influence our mindsets. And we tell God, God, take everything away. I don't want it. I don't need it. I just want you. I just want you. And you tell God, I just want you. So you empty out your heart before God. And because you empty it out, and you don't put anything else back in this place. It reminds me of the story, the parable Jesus told his disciples about a woman who swept out her house. And she swept out her house and didn't put anything back in this place. So the demon that was in the house left the house. It was an unclean spirit. That spirit went wandering, searching for another habitation. But then it says, when he finds that there is none, he says, then I'll go get seven other spirits and I'll go back and claim my ownership of my house I just left. A lot of us, we do the same thing. I include myself. If I don't allow God's spirit to fill my house, to have the me and authority in the atmosphere in my house, no matter what I try to do, I cannot cleanse my house. <coughs> Excuse me. I can clean the house. I can clean the house externally. I can mop the floors. I can clean the walls, clean the mirrors, dust the tables, wash off everything I can externally. That's not going to do it. You just got a clean house externally. But if I don't allow the spirit of God to dwell in my house, my heart, 
my mindset. Then I allow the enemy to take ownership of my mindset and of my house. So the enemy comes in and he does shit what he wants to do. He'll breathe into you spiritual death and separation from God to keep you blind from truth and walking in darkness. But when the spirit of God comes and says, the, the spirit of the natural man, the spirit of the son of God, the spirit of the Holy Spirit, Every man outside of his own body of Christ is a natural man, and such carries the spirit of a natural man. So we got a spirit inside of us, but the spirit of God, the natural man receives not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. So when I get in God's word, allow the word to get inside of me, then I get discernment. I'll recognize anything that's out of the ordinary that would try to disrupt my peace. I recognize anything out of the ordinary that tries to affect my health. It might be something I'm eating. It might be something I'm doing and consuming toxins. It doesn't matter what it is. If it's disturbing your peace of mind and your heart, you need to check yourself and say, God, what is it? Show me what am I not doing that I need to do and cleanse me from things that I am doing that's not of you. And when you begin to allow the Spirit of God, God says the Spirit of man can I receive the things of God for their foolishness? Don't make sense. But if I have the spirit of discernment inside of my heart, the spirit of discernment would give me a revelation to examine my heart, to see my life, where am I standing, what's going on in my life, to allow the spirit of God to purge it out of me. When Jesus breathed into his disciples in the locked room, when he first appeared to them, he gave them his spirit. This after the resurrection. When Jesus rose from the dead, he appeared to the disciples locked in a room. They were hiding because they abandoned Jesus. They were in discouragement. They felt like giving up because now the Savior has been put to death. And we don't know if he's alive like he said he would be. So Jesus had to come along to reassure them that I am the Messiah, I'm the good shepherd, I'm the Lord of lords and King of kings, and I have risen from the dead. Therefore, he breathed on them the breath of life, and they begin to receive the power of God inside of them. But they did not get the Holy Spirit manifestation until the day of Pentecost. When the disciples gathered in the upper room, in Acts chapter 2, when they were in the upper room, the Spirit of God descended on each one of them in cloven tongues of fire in the form of a dove. And all of them were filled with the Holy Ghost. There's more than 200 people in that room. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. That's when they got their power. So I encourage you tonight, get in the Word of God. Study the Word of God. And allow that word of God to transform your mind, your heart, your will, your emotions, your ideas, your concepts, and give your understanding and clarity of the word of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, this is verse 6, ye must be born again in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven in order to dwell in the heavenly places, in the heavenly realm. When Christ died, the, the word says we died with him. And when he rose again, he ascended to the right hand of the Father in majesty on, eye, uh, majesty on high, and we were with him, in him, at the right hand of God. But in order to maintain that position in the heavenly realm, seated in Christ Jesus in authority, you got to study the Word of God. I'm going to say that over and over and over until it gets in your spirit. I have to study the Word of God. I have to know the Word of God for myself. So many people go to church year after year, Sunday after Sunday, and never change. Because many people go for different reasons. Some go to church looking for a relationship. Some go to church to hear good music. Some go to church 
just, so, just, just to say I went to church. But then you have those whose hearts are sincere, who goes to church with a purpose to hear the word of God. Because they know if I can hear a good word from God that will help me get motivated, get me stirred up in my spirit, I can overcome the struggles and the challenges I'm going to face when I leave outside the church. Until you have a desire to want to hear from God, the word of God will become none effect. Jesus told the scribes and the Pharisees, you make the word of God none effective by your religion. You have so many religious folk, but they don't have a relationship with Christ. They have religion, but no relationship. Religion is a system of ideologies and concepts. But the relationship is connection, being consumed in Christ Jesus <coughs> and he inside of you. That's when you know you have the newness of life. The disciples did not change and realize any news of life when he breathed on them. They did not feel any special or even notice any change in themselves whatsoever. This is actually the reason for Jesus asking them to wait for the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit. The disciples did not even notice what Christ had done. And this was due to the absence of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. So even when Jesus breathed on them, they didn't get the revelation until they had to wait for the Holy Ghost to come. That was on the day of Pentecost. This is the recreation, the changing of your human spirit into the kind of spirit of the Son of God that's making you a son of God. That the Son of the Spirit of the Son making you a son of God. So the change doesn't take place until I receive the Holy Spirit inside of me, connecting to the Spirit of the Son of God, which causes me now to become a joint heir with the Son of God. Amen. The Holy Spirit and his power. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Ye shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. The disciples were endued with power at the coming of the Holy Spirit. And then only would they be witnesses unto Jesus to the world. They waited in the upper room until the day of Pentecost. And the day of Pentecost was the celebration of the Passover. 50 years after the Passover, when God liberated his people from Egypt, they were celebrating. And it goes on and says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. <coughs> Excuse me. And there appeared to them cloven tongues like, like as of fire and set upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and received utterance by him. The Holy Spirit brought them into awareness of a new kind and guided them to their inherent abilities. Inherent, limitless, no boundaries. This could not have happened without the Holy Spirit. He brings awareness and guidance. Jesus received the baptism of the Holy Spirit when he was in the form of man in the earth to guide him to the ability of man. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all who, and healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Jesus did not receive the anointing until after the baptism. When Jesus came, to John the Baptist. And John the Baptist, as we know, was the forerunner who set the stage for Jesus to come. When Jesus came, John said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, whose shoes are not worthy, even unlatch. He recognized the power that Jesus had upon him and the manifestation of the prophecy being fulfilled. 
And Jesus came to him asked to be baptized. And when he was baptized, then it says, the Spirit of God descended from heaven in the form of a dove and landed upon Jesus. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost only comes when we are willing to commit and submit ourselves to the Lord. To allow him to have, have his authority, allow him to take dominion in our hearts, in our lives, to control our actions. Then the Holy Spirit can lead, guide you into all truth and bring back to your remember things Jesus taught you. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 16. John chapter 14, verse 16. He says, and I will ask the Father. He will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The advocate is the intercessor, the comforter, the counselor. John 14, verse 26. St. John 14, verse 26. But the advocate, or the comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said unto you. So Jesus made it very clear before his crucifixion to the disciples that I'm not going to leave you, abandon you by yourself, but I'm going to go to my Father. He was talking about after the, after the, after the resurrection. He said, I'm going to go to my father. He said, I'm going to go to my father and pray that he send you another comforter. And this comforter will be your intercessor. He will be your advocate. He will be your guide. He will be your leader. He will be your director of life. He will be the governor of your life. He will be the one who will bring you back into all truth, the things that they were taught the whole time Jesus in his ministry, they will, be, they will be reminded of the principles and the foundation he planted in their hearts through his words that he spoke to them. And he made it clear that the carpenter is going to bring these things back to your remembrance. So in other words, as a child of God in today's time, if I study the word of God, the Holy Spirit, who now lives inside of you and lives inside of me, is going to bring back to your remembrance the things that you studied from God's Word when you needed the most. You might be in an altercation, and the flesh about to rise up, cut somebody out, beat somebody up, about to retaliate, and the Holy Spirit says, Thou will keep in perfect peace, whose mind has stayed on thee. And you're like, dang, he got me again. Because the Spirit of God knows what you need at the time you need Him the most. And He will speak the truth and not a lie. He will tell you what God wants you to do in every situation by the leadership of the Spirit of God. So it's very important to recognize you've got to be born of the Spirit in order for the power to operate in you to overcome the weaknesses of the flesh, to overcome the influences of the flesh, to overcome toxic people, to overcome liars and scandals, slanderers, backbiters and haters, to overcome any attack the enemy use as an assault against you, you have to get in the Word of God. And when the Word gets inside of you, the Word will begin to marinate in your heart and begin to speak. I think it's a... <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Somewhere in Proverbs, it talks about a soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. When you allow the Spirit of God to speak to you, the Spirit of God will give you just what to speak when you need to speak. <clears throat> Hallelujah. One second. I like to be accurate. Proverbs 15, verse 1. Proverbs 15, verse 1. It says, A soft words or soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous harsh words stirs up anger. Wise people learn from others. Some lean, lean on other, only on others in their own experience. Fools won't learn nothing. 
So you can learn from other people by their own experiences. But a fool won't learn anything because a fool only operates according to the wisdom of the world. But a wise person operates in wisdom. They operate according to the standards of God's word. They even operate according to what they've learned and studied. Even an unsaved person can be wise and keep their mouth closed and speak words that of life and not death and words of wisdom. So anybody God can use if you have a willing heart to want to be used by the Lord. A stubborn person will not learn anything but spout out folly, foolishness, because anger rests in the bosom of fools. So do not be hasty to be angry. Angry. When you're hasty to get angry because somebody done upset you, somebody done hurt you, somebody done said something you don't like, the Bible says you become a fool. And that's what God doesn't want you as a child of God to do is let anybody make a fool out of you. But you are to walk in the truth and the wisdom and the knowledge and the instruction and the counsel of the Holy Spirit and allow him to give you just what to say when you need to say it. This could not have happened without the Holy Spirit. He brings awareness and guidance. Jesus received the baptism of the Holy Spirit when he was in the form of man in the earth to guide him into the abilities of man. And God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost, the same Holy Ghost God anoints you with today. Jesus told his disciples they will receive power at the coming of the Holy Spirit for them to be witnesses unto him. For a moment, it looks like an extra power at coming of the Holy Spirit, but it's not, that is not the case. So when Jesus told them you're going to receive power, they think it's going to be something explosive going to happen. Not realizing it's a spiritual power that's dynamite against the power of the enemy. When he told them you're going to receive power after the Holy Ghost come upon you, you'll be my witness. So to be a witness for Jesus Christ, you've got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. When you've been filled with the Holy Spirit and your life has been converted, you have testimonies. How God turned your life around, how God delivered you. You can witness to somebody else who may be going through the same things you experienced and overcame. And you tell them what your mindset was in the midst of the situation, how God showed up in your life, spoke a word to you through somebody else to encourage you that you can make it through the storm and the test of time and not give up. And because you held on to the truth of God's word, the encouragement of other people, and encourage yourself, now I can encourage somebody else who's going through the same thing. History repeats itself. Everything we go through, somebody else is going to experience the same thing. Why? Because it's just life. Life circumstances are going to prevent, present themselves to you even year after year, it'd be the same thing because the enemy don't have a new tactic. The enemy does not test and try and prove you anything new. He brings the same things you're familiar with. The familiar spirits are the things of witchcraft and bondage that he held against you from generation. And when that curse has been broken, been severed, the enemy has no new tactics to attack you with. He comes to you with the same old devices, the same old schemes, the same old baits to lure you into the same old trap. And guess what? We fall into the same trap. The moment I turn my eyes another direction off of Jesus, I fall into the trap. But I turn my eyes back to Jesus, get back in the word, repent of my sins, allow God to wash me the word, Feel me the Holy Spirit, cleanse my heart. Guess what? My focus has been redirected. We must learn how to have disciplined focus as a child of God. Disciplined focus is when you have your king's sight set on the mark for the prize of the high call of God in Christ Jesus. When you do not allow the things of the world or the things the enemy present to you to deter you from your focus. 
The enemy wants to distract you. He wants to destroy you. He wants to conquer you. He wants to defeat you. But you are more than a conqueror. You have more power at your exposal to use against the enemy when you keep your eyes set like a flint on the mark of Christ. And don't, don't allow the enemy to turn your focus. The enemy turns your focus, guess what he does? put scales on your eyes. Just like when you got glaucoma. Just like when your vision starts getting blurry as you get older. And you need glasses. The enemy starts messing up your focus. If I can change your focus from doing what God wants you to do in your life, I can deter you from the promises God has for you. Many born-again believers, hear what I'm saying? Many born-again believers who've been going to church over 50 years, 30 years, 20 years, 10 years, 5 years, miss the promises of God for their life because misguided focus. You allow the enemy to get into your mindset to entice you right here. This is where he attack you at. He don't attack you physically. He more, more so it's the spiritual mind. Then he attacks the physical. Once the mind is attacked, the body becomes attacked. So the enemy can afflict you with infirmities here. It starts with thought. Then you start feeling ill. Then you start feeling side effects. Then you start feeling symptoms. Then you start defeating yourself in your mind that, oh, I feel so sick. I ain't going to never get well. I'm going to always keep getting sick. So your conversation begins to change from faith to fear. So everything the enemy attacks you with is the strategy to give you a misguided focus. But when you recognize, I can put on my glasses, I can see clear, I can see where I'm going, I can see the direction. So a lot of us need to put on our spiritual glasses. Put on your spiritual glasses, the spiritual, spiritual glasses will give you clarity beyond the fog. It give you clarity beyond the floaters. Some of us got floaters in our eyes. And it just stays there. Come, every time you turn your head, you see something move across your eyes. The enemy does the same thing in the spirit realm. He puts floaters in your eyes, which are demonic forces to distract you. So they look real. They look like something physical that you can grab hold to. But it's all it is, it's an entrapment to destroy you. But once I put on my spiritual glasses and I get into the word, I have received the power of the Holy Ghost that came upon me. I am a witness now because he said I can go around the world and tell everybody about Jesus. So I changed my confession to where I'm going to be like God to I am like God. I changed my mindset from defeat to faith and victory. So I am an overcomer. I am an achiever. I am blessed and highly favored. I am a visionary. I am an entrepreneur. I am somebody successful. I am important to God because God made me important to himself. Glory to God. I felt that thing there. I felt that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I praise you, Lord God. I glorify you. I magnify you, Jesus. God, you're great. You're awesome. You're a mighty God. I thank you for this word, God. Hallelujah. What did he mean by they will receive power after the coming of the Holy Spirit? Receive here is the Greek word lambano, lambano, which means to take, to lay hold of, to take upon oneself, to take in order to carry away, to take what is one's own, to admit, to receive what is offered, etc. So Jesus was telling the disciple, his disciples, that when you receive the Holy Spirit's power, you can take hold of the power. Glory to God. You can take it upon yourself. You can call the power to be activated. Holy Spirit, activate. We can have the power of God activate on the inside to radiate outside of our lives, to crush the enemy in his tracks, so every time he come against me, though he, though he slay me. Yet will I keep on trusting him because I have the Holy Spirit inside of me as a dunamis power to destroy everything. Glory to God in the highest. 
that the enemy brings against me so I can receive what is offered to me. Because Jesus said, now it's mine to freely receive. Therefore, he can't take it back. What God has for you, it is for you, and the devil can't steal it. But you can willfully give it up. We need to stop giving the enemy our weapons against ourselves. We need to stop speaking and agreeing with the enemy says about us to destroy ourselves. We need to change our confession to a confession of faith in line with the word of God and speak what God says to speak. And allow the word of God to manifest here in our mindset to begin to produce life and health in our bodies. Glory to God. They would have never been aware of their inherited abilities without the Spirit, Holy Spirit. The misunderstanding of the scripture is that they would have to be baptized with power and the Holy Spirit as though to receive a special ability in addition to him. But that wasn't the case. He wasn't talking about a physical thing. He was talking about a spiritual power that would come inside of you, that would change your DNA, that would change your character, that would change your mindset, that would give you integrity, that would give you a conversation to say, for God I live, for God I'm willing to die. So whatever God you leave me, that will I do. Whatever you say to speak, I will speak. Whatever I hear God, I will speak what you tell me to speak. Glory to God. The Holy Spirit makes you aware of the power that's in you, the virtue that comes out of you. When you lay hands on the sick, they're going to recover. When you speak with new tongues and com command the demons to come out of an individual, the Holy Spirit, how many of those The Holy Spirit begin to draw the enemy out of the people of God by the power of God that's inside of you because you connect to God's Spirit. When I connect... To God's Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit is activated inside of me. It becomes like a charging force to destroy everything that gets in my pathway. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I can't help myself. I'm excited about this word tonight. This word is changing my mindset. It's changing my attitude. It's changing my life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is what makes it look like he received power after coming to the Holy Spirit, or even as a different package in essence. So what was talking about here, the Holy Spirit, the power that's in you, it makes you aware you have power. It gives you discernment to know how to use the power. It gives you the willingness, say, God, I'm going to use your power for your glory. And so it looks like Jesus was telling them that you got to go through the baptism in order to get this power. But he was talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So when I've been baptized in the Spirit, glory to God, the power becomes activated inside of me. So everywhere I go, I can tell the good news that Jesus died, buried, and rose again. Then you will receive salvation. For whoever believes in the Son of God can be born again. But expect, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe he died and buried and rose again for your redemption. Glory to God. Jesus was baptized the Holy Ghost as being and giving the knowledge and endowment to work the miracles and the power. In the power. So he worked when he got the Holy Spirit from the baptism, the power came upon him. He was able to do the miracle signs and wonders that he came to do to manifest himself. Let people know that God is on the throne. That I'm the son of God and I came to bring you life. I tell you, when you get a revelation of who you are, you stop crying. When you get a revelation of who you are, you stop listening to toxic people. You get a revelation of who you are. You stop letting people abuse you and misuse you and mistreat you and use up your gift and your talent. Because the Holy Spirit will give you discernment that this is a usurper, this is a user, this is a deceiver, this is a liar. Get away from him. Cut that spirit out. Begin to destroy that spirit with the word of God. And the, the, one thing about God's word, I can speak to the devil, command them to leave, and they're going to leave. Why? Because of the power that's at my exposal. So the interview you tonight, who's going through any type of attack in your mind, your body, your spirit. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I command the enemy to loose you and let you go free. Every stronghold, every lie, every addiction, every habit, every, everything the enemy used against you to keep you in prison. 
I command the prison doors to be opened for you to set you free by the power of the living God. That the spirit of God begin to flow into your heart. To begin to fill you with an excitement and a joy for the things of God. That you will have a hunger and thirst after righteousness that only God can feel. That you will come to him and lay down before to labor at his feet. Allow God to wash your mindset, to wash your heart, to purify your thoughts, to fill the Holy Ghost. That you can walk in authority against the enemy's tactics that come against you. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for this word, God. I pray this word will penetrate the core of all of our hearts to change our lives, to change our minds, to change our attitude, to fill us with your spirit, God, with the new birth, that we walk in the newness of life, transform. You said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Changed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is a good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Let your will be done, God, in us. That we walk by faith into the promises of your word. As free moral agents in Christ Jesus. Citizens of the heavenly kingdom. No longer being victimized by the enemy. No longer being held in captivity to bondage. But he who the Son is set free. It's free indeed. And I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, amen. In Luke chapter 11, my last verse for the day, we'll continue next week, verse 13. Luke chapter 11, verse 13. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? If you don't have the power of the Holy Spirit to ever speak in the tongue, you can ask God for it. You can ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit, the evidence of speaking in tongues, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit will fall upon you. Because if evil people don't know Jesus, millionaires, billionaires, those who are wealthy, know how to give good gifts to their children. How much more will our Heavenly Father give to those who ask for the Holy Ghost? If I ask for the Holy Ghost to come into my life, guess what? He's going to be there in a second. And all I have to do is activate him by believing, accepting, and receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit with the ever speaking in tongues. And God will begin to move in your heart and change your life forever. So Lord, I pray tonight, this word is not falling from deaf ears, but your word, Father God, will continue to strengthen, encourage, and edify the weak. But give us for our sins, knowing and unknowingly, come into our heart, and wash us in the blood of the Lamb, and sanctify us by your truth. And I thank you, O God, that now you fill us with a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit, your anointing, God, and power to be a witness for you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Give God a hand praise. I tell you, God is so awesome. I don't know about you, but I love this word tonight. And I pray this word continue to stir you up, to motivate you to get in the word of God. And allow the word to transform your mind and your heart. And when you do that, the word of God is going to begin to give you such an excitement and the enlightenment to know who you are and who you are by the power of the Holy Spirit, to walk by faith and not by sight in the promise of God's word. Before I go, I want to invite you to sow a donation, a seed into the ministry. You can sow the seed to my cash out, C. Emery Jr., or to I give a fire. I'm going to post the link on here tonight. I guarantee every seed that's sown into this ministry goes right back into the ministry. Every seed. We have a men's ministry every second Saturday of the month. And every seed that's, that's been given in that ministry goes right back into the church. And I tell you, when you sow your seed, sow an expectation. Sow in, 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 a, in a belief system, a trusting God that he's going to meet your need. The word tells us to give cheerfully 
not of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Don't give grudgingly. He said, but he said, don't give grudgingly or stingily, but give for the purpose of God blessing you. And every time you do that, it's a guarantee God gonna bless you one way or another. It may not be by by you, by somebody close to you, maybe somebody don't even know you, bless you. Because it happens to me all the time. God does it all the time when people bless me because I sow seed. I sow into ministries. I sow, I sow all the time. I sow into people's lives. God tell me to put a person on my heart, sow seed to them, I sow that seed. So I want to encourage you tonight. Sow your seed into the ministry with expectation. Give to come back to you good measures, press down, shaking together, and running over your men, give it to your bosom. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those who have a heart and desire to sow a seed to the ministry that you touch them, God, by your spirit, to be obedient, God, not resist you or oppose you, but walk, Father God, by faith in the promise of your word with the expectation that if I give, it will come back to them, God, pressed down, shaking together, and running over, shall men give it to their bosoms by faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide in us, Henceforth now and for more, evermore till we meet again. I want to thank all of you for tuning in tonight. I want to thank all of you for your participation in the lesson tonight. By even reading the word for yourself. And I pray that it bring a change in your life forever. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to inbox me here on Facebook. And I will answer your question to my court by the Holy Spirit. And I tell you when you do this, you help me grow. Because every day I'm growing, the more I study God's word, the more this word is coming alive in my heart. And I, I love teaching the word of God. I love preaching the word of God. And I want you to keep me in your prayers. I'm still healing up from when I fell about uh, a little over two months ago. I'm still healing up from that. I've been having headaches again lately and different pain in my muscles and certain areas. But I'm getting better every day by the grace of God, by faith. I am already healed. I'm already delivered. I'm stronger in the Lord and the power of his might. Because I trust in God. And I pray you do the same thing. You walk by faith and not by sight. And I guarantee you'll find yourself being blessed everywhere you go. God bless you again, everyone. And shalom, peace, provisions, satisfaction be given unto you by our Lord Jesus Christ. Until next time, the Lord says the same. Good night, everybody. And I Catch you next time. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory.